OK, in this problem, we've got two particles of mass 8 kilos and m kilos, respectively, are connected by a light inextensible string passes over a uh, passing over a smooth peg. Both particles hang vertically with one particle held at rest. The particle is released. Given that the acceleration of the particles is 5 meters per second per second, find the mass m, the tension in the string, and the downward force on the peg. OK, so let's draw a diagram to see what's going on. Here's the peg. OK, here is the first particle. And let's say here's the second particle. Now, how high up these two particles are uh, doesn't relate to the problem. OK, so the problem doesn't involve that. So it doesn't really matter how I draw it. OK, so here are my two particles. I know the first particle has mass 8 kilos. So that means it's got a weight of 8g. The second particle has a mass of m kilos, and so that's got a weight of mg. We've got the tension in the string. OK, let's call that capital T. OK, um, both particles hang vertically with one particle held at rest. The particle is released, given that the acceleration of particles is 5 meters per second per second. Now, um, in order for this to work, OK, we could have the uh, mass at two different levels, OK? Um, because we don't know the actual direction of the acceleration. Because we don't know the mass of this particle, if we knew that the mass of this particle was uh, greater than the mass of that particle, then I know the acceleration is pointing that way. Um, in this case, I don't. Okay, So it could be that that one has more mass than that one, in which case it's going that way. Okay, So really, we've got two situations on our hands. So either m is greater than 8, in which case the acceleration would be this way. OK, so let's have a look at that situation. So uh, if we resolve this particle here, so let's call that one A and that one B. OK, so if I look at A and I resolve vertically, taking upwards as positive, then I've got T take away 8G is equal to the mass 8 times the acceleration of 5. So the tension, uh, straight off the bat, 8 times 5 plus 8 times 9.8 would be 118.4. OK, so that's really answering part 2 if M is greater than 8. OK? So that's the case there. Now, for particle B, OK, so if we look at particle B, then we can resolve taking downwards as positive. We've got mg take away t, which is the 118.4, is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So m times 5, so 5m. Right, so I need to get m equals. So if I add the 118.4 to both sides, and take the 5n from both sides. I can factorise that, take the m out. I've got g minus 5 is 118.4. So m is 118.4 divided by g minus 5. So I'm taking g as 9.8 here. And we get 74 thirds. OK, so that's um, approximately 25 kilos. OK, that would be uh, the mass of M in that case. If, on the other hand, uh, the mass of the object is less than 8, now we can't have equal to the 8. OK, they can't have both the same mass, otherwise we won't be accelerating at 5 meters per second per second. So if the mass is less than 8, OK, then the situation we would have is that we would now be accelerating this way. So I'll just change the direction of the arrow. So if I now take A and I resolve taking downwards as positive, I've got 8G minus T is equal to the mass times the acceleration. OK, 
So that means that t would be 8 times 9.8 take away 8 times 5, which is 38.4 newtons. OK, so there's my tension. And then if I look at particle B and I was to resolve upwards, then I've got uh, T, the 38.4, take away mg is equal to the mass times the acceleration, so 5m. So if I add the mg to both sides and then factorise that right-hand side, and so m must be 38.4 divided by g plus 5. So 38.4 divided by 9.8 plus 5 gets me 96 over 37, which means that the mass would have to have been approximately 2.6 kilos. Okay, so I've, I've rounded both those to two significant figures, okay, based on the fact that I'm using 9.8. Okay, so if the mass is 2.6 kilos um, for particle B, then it will accelerate upwards at 5 meters per second per second. If the mass of particle B is 25 kilos, it will accelerate downwards at 5 meters per second per second. Okay? So, those are the situations that I would have to deal with. For part 3, the downward force on the peg, okay? Now, thinking about it this way, right? You've got the tension in the string pulling down on the peg, okay? So actually, when you think about uh, the force that's acting on the peg, it's two lots of the tension, okay? So in this case, if m was greater than 8, then the answer to part 3 would be two lots of 118.4. So that's 236.8 newtons. Or, if m is less than 8, it's 2 lots of the 38.4, which is 76.8 newtons. So you can see how the problem can change depending on um, that mass, okay, the mass of that particle. So it's likely, in all likelihood, um, an exam question would probably pick one or the other. OK, um, but potentially there could be a problem where uh, the problem switches partway through the question, OK, um, so that you might have to investigate both possibilities. OK, and this is how you could go about it.